So question six, again, uh, related to the light experiment and uh, a student investigating the position of the image in a plane mirror. Look, there are two ways to do such experiment. One is the optical pin method. In optical pin method, we use a pin as an object and we locate its image by using uh, other set of pins. And there's also another ray box method is there, a ray box method. So ray box method, it should be done in a dark room. There should be no light source. But if it's an optical pin method, then the room should be bright so that we can see the pins. A student investigate the position of the image in a plane mirror. Figure 3.1 shows a ray trace sheet he uses. You can see uh, this is what the student uh, ray trace sheet looks like. You just have to follow the instruction for these questions. The first one, the first instruction, student draw a line MR. So student draw a line MR, as you can see here, it's drawn already. He draw the normal, uh, normal is always perpendicular NL. So you can see he draw the normal NL. This is a normal. He labels the point at which the normal NL crosses MR as B. So he label, you can see where NL crosses MR, he label that as B. Then he draw a line from B at an angle of uh, 30 degree to the normal and to the left of the normal and he label that as A. So you can see he mark uh, a normal, like after normal, on the left hand side of a normal, he measure the angle as 30. So the angle of the incidence here is 30 degrees, this angle. So this is equals to 30. Then he placed P, pin one, P1 on a line and he placed another pin on the line. So he placed two pins on the line, P1 and P, P2 is not shown here because they did not ask till now. Then uh, he places a reflection, like he places a reflection face of a mirror vertically. Then he view the pin. So he see the pin, the, in the mirror, he will look the pin P1 and pin 2. And where the image appeared, he draw another pin P3 and P4, like mark and place another pin. On a figure, mark with a cross a suitable position for P2, like P1 and P2, as you can see here, this is statement, he places P1 and he place another pin P2 on the line AB. So we have to mark a position of another pin P2 Whenever you're marking a position of the two pins, it should be like five centimeter apart from each other. So if this is pin one, where should we should place pin two, at least or minimum five centimeter. So we mark anywhere on this line AB and that is a position of P2. Then on a figure, we mark that then he places two pins P3 and P4 and some distance so that the image of P1 and P2 appear in the line. Draw a line joining P3 and P4 and continue until, uh, continue this extent be about seven centimeter beyond MR. So we have to draw a line which is joining P3 and P4. So we have to draw a line joining P3 and P4 and we have to continue until it is beyond MR. So we continue in seven centimeter dimension here. So as you can see this part, draw a line joining P3 and P4 and continue the line until and extend it at least seven centimeter beyond MR. Look, after MR, it should be seven centimeter. So we draw and after MR, we just extend seven centimeter. Then student keeps P1 in the same position, but moves P2 so that the angle of incidence is 40. The pin P5 and P6 are the reflected mark at 3.1. Draw a line joining P5 and P6 and continue, continue until uh, at least seven centimeter and label a point Y where the two line intersect beyond MR. So what we have to do, like we already joined the position for P3 and P4, then they said, draw another line joining P5 and 6. So join P5 and P6 and continue this line and beyond MR until it me like continue 7 centimeter beyond MR. And the point where this line intersect the first one, 
label that as Y. So this will label as Y. So you, again, as I mentioned, you just have to follow the instruction. So that is a point Y. Then draw a line from P1 to MR and the, that meet MR right angle and measure and record the length. And then draw a line from uh, Y and, and perpendicular and measure that length as B. So what we have to do, like after joining this, they said draw a line from pin 1 to MR and that should line should be perpendicular. Like we will draw a line from pin 1 to MR and that line should be perpendicular. And what we call this uh, line, we call that as A. The length of this line is referred to A. Then they said draw a line joining Y with MR. So this is point Y and we join perpendicular to MR and we call that as B. And we have to measure these lengths for A and B. So you have to just, it can be according to the figure, it will, you will get the answer. I'm just saying, say A, A was uh, say four centimeter and B is example 4.3 centimeter. And so it can be any number depending on which one is, or it might be same. It depends on the value which you get. After measuring the length of A and B, student remove all the pins and he place uh, pin 7, which is normal at a distance of 6 cm in front. So he place another pin, pin 7. You can see here, P7 is there. In P7, it's not placed, but he placed perpendicular 90 degree. He views the pin 7 in the mirror and he placed uh, pin 8 on the mirror behind the mirror. He adjusted so that the position of P8 and the image of the bottom are uh, one over the other. On the figure, measure a distance X uh, along the normal between P8 and the mirror. So, you have to measure this distance. We have to measure this distance from P8 to the normal. This distance you have to measure. Then he adjusted uh, that that is value of x. Then complete the diagram. On uh, in figure seven point two, show the appearance of image of P seven and P eight. Look, as we said, then pin seven and pin eight are one over the other, li like behind each other. So if this was a mirror, say if you are looking from the top, so this, if this was a mirror, and this was pin seven P seven, and P eight is just in front, uh, like behind the mirror, P eight is there. This is when you're looking from the top, but if you're looking from the side way, like example, if you're looking into the mirror, the two pins appear one, as I mentioned, two pins appear one behind the other. So if this is pin seven, if this is pin seven, what will be pin eight? The pin eight will be just behind other. So we won't see two pins. We'll only, we'll only see or observe one pin because pin seven, and pin 8 are one behind the other. A mirror is placed in front of them. Like if you're looking from the side and the mirror height is, say so this is representing a mirror. The two pins are placed one in front of a mirror. One is behind the mirror. But when you, this is when you look from the side. But if you look from the front, what will appear? It will appear as one pin because it's like one behind the other. If I place, one pin behind, just behind of the one pin, I place another pin in line. So I won't see two pins. I will see only one. So as a result, the, the thing is, they ask, uh, you have to show how the pins will appear or look like if this was a mirror. So how it will look like? It will look like only a single pin. The one behind the other. Is it uh, clear, this one? Any doubt in this?
Okay. The next one in part D. The student expect the reading to show that the image form on a plane mirror is same distance behind the mirror in front. The reading A is equals to B and X will show this. State whether your reading show that the images like the image form in a plane mirror is same distance behind. So what you have to do, you have to compare the value of A with B. For example, say your value for A was 4.4. Or 4.0 centimeter and the value of a b is example 4.3 centimeter so what you can do are the values equal 4 is equals to 4.3 yes or no? no no so we will see statement here it is always a comparison maybe your value is like one is four another is 4.1 so we'll say yes but four and 4.3 are not so statement we will say no a is not equal to b and why justification is there? The value of A example is 4 centimeter, where value of B is 4.3 centimeter. So how we say if the two values are not equal, so we'll say if they are beyond the limit. If the two values are equal, we say they are within the limit. And if the two values are not equal, means they are beyond the limit of experimental accuracy. Or you can also say the percentage difference is more than 10% if the two values are not equal. Then student uh, carries out the experiment with care, suggests a practical reason why the results may not be accurate. For these experiments, the experiment in which you use optical pin, when you use a pin, so what might be the reason? The thickness of the pin. Like if I use thick pins or thicker pins, as a result, I can draw multiple lines. So if you use thick pins, then the lines which we draw may, may not have the, like multiple ways are there to draw the lines. That is one thing. Another thing, the thickness of the line may also affect. If you're drawing like the student draw thick lines. Yes. So it will also reduce the angle, change the angle. So thickness of the pin, thickness of the lines, thickness of the mirror are difficult to, ex because here we are placing the pin. So it's difficult to place the pin accurately as possible. Like maybe that, that's also a reason. So whenever an experiment related to the optical pin method in which you are uh, using a reflection or a refraction, what are the uh, possible sources of right. uncertainties? or errors you can say, the thickness of the pin, the thickness of the line, which we draw, uh, difficult to place the pin accurately, uh, 